even with today's mirrorless cameras where you get the what you see is what you get screen that's not always true because i'm sure some of you have taken your cameras back afterwards looked at the pictures and thought oh that's come out darker than i thought or brighter than i thought and it's not quite exactly right if you learn how to read a histogram properly and it's not that hard you just need to be shown how to you can avoid a lot of these problems by understanding that the histogram is showing exactly what you're going to get with one caveat it's a representation of the jpeg or in-camera picture style settings that you've set on your camera to always set them to a neutral or flat profile within the camera to get as close to the raw file as possible. There's no need to spend years and years now not understanding how to read a histogram. You can just watch this video in its entirety and then you'll have enough of an understanding to go out there and do it. With a bit of practice, you'll be able to use that then for the rest of your life as a photographer. So you'll need your thinking caps on for this one and you'll have to pay attention as you go through. And if you don't understand something or you miss something, just wind it back, but it's not particularly complicated. It's just 10 minutes that you need to get through and then it's done and you should hopefully understand it by the end of it. I'm gonna be teaching this in Photoshop because a histogram is a histogram. It doesn't matter if it's an edited picture, if it's the back of your camera or anything. As long as you understand how a histogram works, you can apply it to anything. So let's go into the computer now. I'll open up Photoshop and let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is bring up our histogram. So what we need to understand here is that the picture we've got at the moment is completely black and that's represented by this white line here. So remember, black is on the left, 100% pure white is on the right and everything else is in the middle. So middle gray would be a line down the middle here. This is completely crushed, you would say. There's no detail, it's just 100% black. I'm gonna add in a white line here and we can see that this has appeared on the histogram on the right hand side which gives us 100% white. I put some grey in here which appears roughly somewhere in the middle because it's a round middle grey. What I want you to see from this is that black and white are represented on the left and right respectively and greys are all the way through the middle. That tends to be where most people's understanding of histogram stops. Let's go beyond that now and I'll show you how this applies to more real world photographs and not stuff like this. I want you to remember that whilst these are edited photos it really makes no difference because what you see on the back of the camera would be how you judge your exposure. You can do the same thing for your edited photos, your, your straight out of camera photos, any picture it doesn't matter it's all the same once you can read histograms you can read histograms. So the histogram what we would expect to see when we're shooting this is I would want to be protecting the highlights so I would want to see that the area on the right hand side of the histogram isn't reaching any peaks and blowing out pure white like we saw in the previous example that white is blown pure white to this picture this is the histogram we will see we're blocked up on the black side of the histogram which is this area on the left hand side here and over here as well so that's represented by this and you have to make choices when you do these kind of things when you're making pictures it's that like I'm absolutely fine with these areas going completely to black that just doesn't bother me I'm not fussed in this example we can see the bulk of the data is here and that it's just coming up to pure white in a few areas, probably just here and so for me this is the kind of balance that I was wanting to achieve in this picture now I know you're saying well how do I know when it's too far over to the left how do I know when it's too far over to the right what I would be looking for when I'm making my picture in camera is that the histogram is just only reaching the far right because my intention is to not blow the highlights here is to just get them right up to the edge and that is this point here in this exposure and then everything else can just go to wherever it goes because that's my priority for this picture let's look at something that's the other way around so when we look at this picture my priority here is to make a bright and airy picture. So I'm going to be bunching everything over up onto the right. I'm wanting to see that these dark areas here are only just touching on the left hand side. So that would probably be this area at the back here and I'd be expecting that. But I want to bunch as much information over to the right as possible. So this is clipping slightly in the white that's due to the editing. So we can see how much the histogram is bunched over to the right hand side on the bright and airy picture. And my my priority here from when I'm wanting to do bright and airy is to make sure that the histogram is not clipping any information. There's no crushed area on the black side and everything's as bunched as far over to the right as possible. And so everything else in the picture is represented by this area. Let's move on to another picture. So here in a studio shot where the lighting's much softer and more controlled, what we see is that the dark area just stops around here and the light area doesn't even quite get to the peak of the whites. 
Everything else is just contained within the middle section of the graph. And what this tells us is that we're within the full dynamic range of the picture. Nothing's blowing either side. And most of our picture is fitting into the middle ground, which is what we'd want. So for this picture, I want to try and put some of those ideas together for you so you can understand how this would look. So obviously this is an edited picture, but like I said, it doesn't make any difference. The point is that we understand what we should expect from our histograms. So in this instance, I would expect to see a large amount of data on the left hand side of the histogram because most of the picture is dark. OK, and I would expect to see some stuff in the lighter areas as well. So they reaching out onto the right hand side. So it might if I draw with my mouse here, I would expect something that looks up, comes down like this and then tails off because that's what I've got in the picture. That's what I'm expecting. So let's look at our histogram now bring up the histogram and then you see that this is what we get. We get this climbing up. So there's a lot of information in the darker areas here. The darkest areas aren't blown and it tails off towards the highlights. But we have highlight information. It's showing here. So this fairly dark gray area in terms of luminance is all of this stuff here. It's all of this. And that's represented here. And then we have a little trough and then there's another peak. So this little peak area here is probably some of these things, this bit here. And then all of this area is probably the sky and the brighter areas of the picture. You can really just see the height of the histogram saying there's a lot of stuff here. There's less stuff here. There's a bit more there and there's not a lot of it here, but there is some. That's how you can read that. So the way that we use this when we're exposing is we have to think about what do we want from our exposure? Do we want a bright picture? Do we want a dark picture? And then we want to see our histogram representing that. We want to see, for instance, this is supposed to be bright and airy. I want to see a, a graph on my histogram that comes up here and peaks on the right hand side and whether it blows on the pixels or not on the right depends on the picture. You have to think about that. Do I mind if some of the hair blows? If I want to protect that, then I will just drop my exposure down slightly. So this doesn't quite touch the edge, this right hand part. And if I want to make sure that there's information in those dark areas, I will push the histogram to the right. So I see that there's nothing clipping on the left hand side. Here. This is supposed to be a dark and moody picture. So I want the data to be heaped onto the left hand side. I don't want to touching the left wall because I don't lose any of the data at all. I don't want to clip on the left. And ideally, I don't want to clip on the right either. So what this means for you is that you need to start to understand how your histogram should be bunched up, what you should be expecting to see, whether you should be expecting to see anything touching the right wall or the left wall. That's very important, whether you're OK with that or not, whether it matters or not because for instance again like in this picture that doesn't bother me at all what bothers me completely is seeing these wispy parts of the veil and i need to protect the highlights in order to do that and i just don't care at all about any parts of the picture in these corners that turns black that just doesn't bother me so i'm just looking that my histogram is protected on the right hand side i'm looking that everything's bunched as far to the right as possible to get these bright tones bright dress bright skin bright hair bright background i want that airy look i'm looking here for everything being roughly in the middle because i want this kind of middle toned picture and i'm looking for things being bunched over to the left but nothing hitting the left hand wall because i want a darker moody landscape and i want to protect on the right hand side now there could be a situation for especially for certain things like landscapes and so on, but other types of pictures as well, where dynamic range in the picture, that's the information that's held within this histogram, just goes beyond either wall and there's nothing you can do about it. So let's create a situation that looks like that. I'm going to stretch this out with a curves adjustment. Now I'm hitting both walls. So this would be a high dynamic range situation. If this was in camera and I was getting this kind of a thing, there would be no exposure that I could achieve that would allow me to capture the sky and the ground at the same time. There's two ways around these situations. One, if it's something like a portrait, portrait situation where you're dealing with people is you use flash. So you expose for the background and then light the subjects with your light. In this sort of instance, I'm not going to be using flash because it would just be ridiculous. But what I would do here is bracket my exposures and that will be a separate video for you. 
to subscribe if you want to see that in the future. But you would bracket the exposure, so you would expose for the highlights, you'd expose for the midtones, and then you expose for the shadows. So you make sure that you get three exposures that encompass all of that. And then you can combine those exposures in your editing software so that you can get all of the detail throughout the entire picture. So reading your histogram is just a really useful thing to be able to do. And it takes a time to get used to it. But if you keep looking at it, keep looking at your exposures, you start to get a feel for it. And so it's not something that you can just immediately do. But if you understand what you're looking for, after a few weeks of paying attention to your histogram, you will understand what it's doing and what it means. And then it becomes a very powerful tool for you to use in your pictures. Consider buying me a coffee if you found this video useful. The link is down in the description and it really helps me out and keeps this channel going. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, remember to subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you liked it and drop me a comment if you've got any questions or if you want to give me any feedback and I'll get back to you later. I hope to see you again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.